All right. Thanks for uh, spoiling it. My name is Josh. Um, I'm super excited. Tonight's going to be fun. Uh, as you can tell, for those of you who are regular here, Mike is gone. And he trusted your guys' very lives with me and the interns, DJ and Devin. We do a good job? No. Listen, the rain wasn't my fault. All right. So, we having fun tonight? Yeah? Wow. Oh. Let's try that again. We having fun tonight? Yeah. There we go. Did you guys like the game? Because yeah. you won. Yeah. The game, it was, we played it a long time ago, and tonight was the first time bringing it back. All right. If you're new here, like I said, my name is Josh. And we love having a great time here. We love playing games. We love singing, right? And we also like to talk about someone that we call God. His name is God, and we like him a lot. Um, this God, he is so amazing and incredible that we would like to take time in our service to talk about him. And if you guys are new here or... Um, you're a regular here. This only takes about 20-ish minutes. And if you have a hard time staying focused, we're out handing uh, fidgets right now. So just raise your hand if you want to fidget. And we will bring it by. You have to trade us for something. All right. That's my intro. Now we're going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for tonight. I pray that we can just take this moment to calm down, sit, rest in you, Lord, what you are trying to speak to us. Lord, I pray that my words tonight will be your words, and it's what you want these students to hear, Lord, and that you can reach their lives in ways that they can never imagine. And Lord, we just pray. I just pray over everyone in this room right now. And just hope that they're having a good time. Hope that they can be accepting you, Lord. Listen to the words that you have for them. I pray we have a great rest of our night. Amen. All righty. Let's dive into tonight's message. Last week, Mike set us up for tonight. If you had missed last week's message, here was the big idea of last week, Mike's big idea. You lean, oh, that is my mistake. Okay, let's bring that down. Let's go back to the regular slide. I'll read what Mike had last week. Mike said, last week, you lean into the power of the Holy Spirit. If, if you lean into the power of the Holy Spirit, like the disciples did, by living with the awareness that he dwells within you and asking him to work in and through you. Mike concluded with this. He said, the reason that many of us have never clearly or rarely experienced the power of the Holy Spirit it is because we live like God is far from us and we do not ask him for help. Right? When life is hard and we don't know what to say, we don't know what to do, we don't know what's going to happen, we don't ask the Holy Spirit for help because we think he's far from us. So that was last week, and you guys are going to see part of last week's message ending, continuing in, today, in tonight's message. So that is tonight, and that was last week. Um, let's dive into tonight. <clears throat> this week, we will be learning how to let the Holy Spirit work through us, right? Last week, we learned, we learned all about the Holy Spirit through this sermon, through this message, and Tonight, we're learning how to let the Holy Spirit work through us. How do we let the Holy Spirit work through us in the midst of fear? The unknown is scary, but when we are afraid because we do not know what, to, what will happen, we do not know, we cry out to God, God, please help me. I don't know what to do. I'm afraid. I don't know what will happen. When we cry out to God, he steps in and he works in amazing ways that we could have never imagined. Tonight, we are talking about what may happen when we cry out to God and to ask the Holy Spirit for help. 
Uh, we're going to look through a few passages in the book of Acts. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the book of Acts, all right? Jesus dies in the end of the Gospels, and then we get Acts, right? And all the disciples are like, oh, man, the Messiah is dead. I thought we were going to be able, like, I thought he was going to conquer the world, this and that, and all of a sudden he's dead. So they're pretty down, and they're pretty, uh, they're pretty depressed, to be honest. Their best friend just passed away. Right, so they are like, okay, uh, what do we do? Boom, Jesus shows back, rises from the grave. Easter. Yeah, thank you. When he comes back, he says, I need you. I need you to go out, and I need you to share the gospel to all the world. As you are going, I need you to go share my name and the good news that I have for everyone. And they're like, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. We can't wait to to go out and share the gospel. We're going to all go sit together in a room and do nothing. And that's what they did. They, Jesus just said, go, go out and share the gospel. And then they go and sit in a room. I imagine they're like, hmm, what did he mean by go and share the gospel? And it's pretty obvious, right? <clears throat> all of a sudden, boom, wind, crash. And fire starts filling the room, and they're running around, right? Mike ran around like a little girl on stage. I'm not going to do that. They ran around, and the, the fire was chasing them, and all of a sudden it lands on them, and that's the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit dwelled in them. That was when the Holy Spirit came. Jesus said, when I leave, there's going to be a helper that I will send to you, and that was the Holy Spirit, and that's when that happened. So that's where we are. The disciples... They, they leave the room with the Holy Spirit. Uh, thousands of people joined the church that day, and God is on the move. He's already started. The early church that started with 12 dudes in a room sitting doing nothing is now growing by the thousands. So that's where we are. <clears throat> Three ways to let the Holy Spirit move through you. Three ways to let the Holy Spirit move through you. Number one, you just got to ask, right? This is what Mike talked about. You just got to ask. And that brings us to our first passage for tonight. Let's read. Acts 4, 23 through 31. It says, when they were released, Peter and John, they were on trial with the Pharisees. So when they were released from being on trial against the Pharisees, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders said to them. And, and when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of, your fa of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly in this city, they were gathered together against your holy servant, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal. And signs and wonders were performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Peter and John, they went to testify in the Jewish court because the Pharisees were trying to shut the church down. The Pharisees were like, hold on, hold on. You're growing by the thousands? Stop. Come in. We're going to question you. We're going to prove that you guys are heretics and you don't believe in God, the, the true God, and you guys stink, right? So... Peter and John, they go, and then they come out, and the Holy Spirit hits the uno reverse. He's like, okay, you guys want to persecute my people? They're going to they're gonna pray for, for boldness, and the Holy Spirit answers them. And everyone, like the Holy Spirit moved in wondrous ways, did miracles. And the, and the church grew more and more. Again, the disciples were being pressured and persecuted as they were building up the early church and the Holy Spirit moved and worked through them that in the midst of this pressure and persecution through the Holy Spirit, 
They did not even slow down for one second. That's the power that you and I have as Christians and believers of Jesus. If we were able to pray and ask the Holy Spirit for strength and boldness in the midst of our pressures in life, our fears, our fears of talking to our friends, and our fear of not knowing what will happen, if we pray to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can move in that. We just have to let go and let the Holy Spirit move. <clears throat> Can I tell you guys a quick story? Quick story, all right, story time, except I'm not going to sit down on the ground. Story time. This was Monday last week, relevant, super recent, Monday last week, all right, and I was having a hard time. Um, I was having a hard time. I was down. I was behind in schoolwork. And if none of you guys know by now, I'm engaged to my beautiful fiance, Katie. <laughs> yes. She is an amazing volunteer. She's personally my favorite. I don't know. She's the best. If you want to talk to her, you can talk about anything. And if, if you cry with her, she'll cry with you. It's amazing. She's awesome. All right. So we're engaged. And it's getting close, all right? Our date is in May. We've got to, like, figure out where we're going to live. We've got to figure out what we're going to eat. We've got to figure out, like, how we're going to function together. And it's pretty stressful sometimes. Not, and on top of that, I'm, like, way behind in schoolwork, trying to keep my grades up. Uh, I work for a pool company. I sell pools uh, so I can make money. And I also spend a lot of my time with you guys because I'm an intern. So there's a lot going on in my life, and it's busy. There's a lot going on in my life, and it's busy. Um, all right, all right, all right. Shh. There's a lot going on in my life. It's busy. And I was feeling it. I was down. I was depressed. Uh, I was frustrated. I was worried. I was scared. Very, very scared. And I, honestly, it, it was to a point where I just came to the Holy Spirit. I just came to God, and I was like, Lord, if you don't help me, I really don't know. This is gonna, something's going to give. Something's going to, I'm, I'm going to end up dropping. Like, something bad's going to happen. I needed God in this moment. And so I prayed. I asked the Holy Spirit for help. And then guess what happened? Nothing. I went on my day. I went to class. And I totally forgot about it. I was like, okay, I got class. I got to eat lunch. I'm going to hang out with Katie. I'll try to do some homework. So I go about my day. Monday night, I go to bed at 10 o'clock. And... When I go to bed, you guys are going to be jealous for this. When I go to bed, I put my head on the pillow, and I close my eyes, and I open them, and it's 7.30 in the morning. That's about it. That's all I do when I sleep. I put my head on the pillow, and I'm out like a light. And I never wake up in the middle, I never wake up in the middle of the night. I never do. I went to bed at 10, 8, 10 p.m., and I woke up. Listen up, guys. I woke up at 12 a.m. in the middle of the night, Tuesday morning. And I was wide awake. I was like, okay, I'm awake. I'm, I'm wide awake. It's 12 a.m. What am I going to do? I'm like, oh, I guess I'll do some homework. Do, 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 do some homework. By the way, I was behind two weeks in this class. And the, the class was over in two weeks. So I had four weeks to do in two weeks. And I'm like, okay, I'll do an assignment. I'll do a quiz. I'll do a discussion question. I'll write a 700-word 700, 700 assignment, and I just kept going. I was like, and each time I did an assignment, I was like, next one. Ah, just one more. Just one more. Come 6, more, 6 a.m. in the morning, I finished the entire class. What? What? A lot of you seniors are jealous right now. Um. 6 a.m., I finished the entire class. I got a 96 on my final exam. What? That's like the highest final exam I've ever gotten. 
I go about my day. I'm like, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm like, okay, I'm still awake. I didn't go to bed. I go to class. Uh, that's Tuesday. What else happened? I don't know. I, I go to class. Uh, I had another appointment. I did some work for, for pools. I made some phone calls. I called customers, sending emails. And by 9.30, Tuesday night, I had the most productive day of my life. Like, it was amazing. And later that night, I just had this moment with God where I was like, oh, my word. Like, that chills down your back and, like, jaw drops. Just like, God answered my prayer. Right? Has anyone experienced that? When you pray to God because you need him really badly? Not like, Lord, I need you to get an, I need to get an A. I didn't study and I really don't know the course, but I just need you to do something miraculous and get me an A. Not like that kind. I'm talking like, I'm talking like real prayer. Lord, my parents are having a hard time. I don't know what to do. My friends are having a hard time. I don't know what to do. I'm having a hard time. All my friends live in life, it's great for them. Why am I having a hard time? I'm talking one of these prayers. Right? A prayer where you, you know you're just you're down, and it's tough right now. And when you pray to God, he sees you. And it may be something that you didn't notice happened later on, but I know God worked in your life. Or maybe it was something you noticed, and you had that jaw-dropping moment like I did, like, what? My voice is dead. What? Right? I had that moment. It was amazing. And I know this isn't how God is going to move through you exactly, but this is how the Holy Spirit moved in my life very, very recently. When we are at our lowest, when all odds are stacked against us, like I was Monday morning last week, and I prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to move, help me. The Holy Spirit knew exactly what I needed. He gave it to me. He gave me energy. He gave me perseverance. He gave me courage. The Holy Spirit knew what the early church needed. They were being persecuted. He knew that they needed to keep growing because if they were to stop, if the, if the Jewish court were to stop them, then it wasn't going to go anywhere. And the Holy Spirit need, knew that, and he provided for them. That is the Holy Spirit that lives in us, and we have to trust God and ask the Holy Spirit for help. Three ways to let the Holy Spirit move through you. You just have to ask. And number two, don't underestimate the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> if we think God can't help us, what God do you believe in? If, if, you're, if you're honestly just like, God, like if you're thinking in the back of your mind, like, I don't know if God can help me in this. I'm sorry, but that's not the same God I believe in. I believe in a God that can wake you up at 12 a.m. and give you enough energy to work all day long. That's, that's unheard of for me, right? Don't underestimate the Holy Spirit. If you think your God is just barely enough to fix the problem you're in right now, you're not believing in the same God I believe in. Our God can move through you and work in miraculous ways, wonderful ways that you would never imagine. And he can change your life. We cannot underestimate God. Let's read our next passage, Acts 4, 32 through 37. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that they, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own. So they were like, I have this iPad, it's not my own. Um, and, but they believed they had, they had everything in common and to him was his, and with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection, to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were sharing the gospel and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Thus Joseph, who was also called by the apostle Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, 
a Levite, a native of Cyprus, sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. What just happened here was every person that needed something, whether it was someone who could not, who could not work, they had some sort of disability, or they were sick, or they were you know, handicapped, they couldn't work, or anyone who uh, might be mentally ill, right, on the spectrum, anyone like that who just couldn't work, who couldn't, who couldn't take care of themselves, they were all taken care of. Imagine a world where there's no homeless people. That would be insane. Every person who is on the street, their life is hard. And yeah, some of you might say they chose to be there. And yeah, some of you say they, they can't get out. And that may be true. But we as Christians are called to love everyone, our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters. That's what they did. The early church, they sold all they had and they shared their wealth. They shared what they had and everyone was taken care of. A lot of people use this text and they say, a lot of people use this text and they say, oh, we should sell everything we have. Okay. If God calls you to do that, I'm, I'm very, I can't wait to see what God does for you in your life. He calls you to that. But that's not what this text is saying. The Holy Spirit is showing how powerful he is to take care of every person in their area. Every person of this town was taken care of through the church. The Holy Spirit moved through the church and took care of everyone. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Three ways to let the Holy Spirit move through you. You just have to ask. Don't underestimate the Holy Spirit and get out of the way. I tried to change it to... uh, don't get in the way, but it didn't work. So get out of the way is what we got for tonight. When we ask the Holy Spirit and he shows up, you better let him work, not be, you know, be fearless. Let the Holy Spirit work through you. Try not to get in the way. Let's read the next passage, Acts 5, 12 through 16. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Simon's portico. I have no clue what that is. It could be a house. It sounds like a bathroom. I don't know. None of the rest dared join them. It could be a bathroom. But the people held them in high esteem, and more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets, and they laid them on cots and mats. And as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. You've got Peter doing wonderful works through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is just moving through him, and the church is growing. And everyone's, everyone wants their, their sick people to be healed, right? Because that's a huge burden to have. That stinks if you're that person who's sick and you can't take care of yourself. So everyone's bringing out their sick, and they're hoping that just his shadow might fall on them. Like, that's how hopeful they are. They see Peter, they see the works of the Holy Spirit, and they're so hopeful they hope that his shadow would fall on them. Lives, people are being saved, bodies are being healed, and demons are being casted out. Those who have been called to give their belongings are surrendering it to Jesus, and the church is growing. This Jesus that we love and who loves us more than anything that we can imagine is spreading, and more and more people by the thousands are being changed. We must not get in the way of the Holy Spirit and the work that he has called us. Now, I know you guys are like, okay, that sounds great, Josh, but I have no experience with this, very little. I felt a little bit of something during camp, or if you're new, you're like, I am so confused, and I'm staring at my phone probably. That's okay. I have a couple scenarios, a couple things that we can put ourselves in. Let's put ourselves in this scenario. 
Everyone in the room right now, imagine yourself in this scenario. Scenario number one, you're at school. Sorry for you homeschoolers. Let's just say you're with friends. Scenario number one, you're at school or you're with friends. You know who you know is not a believer in Jesus. You're with someone who you know is not a believer in Jesus. They are talking about how hard their life is. You feel like you should say something to encourage them. All those fears that they have, all the worries that they have, you feel like you should speak life into them, but you don't know what to say. All those fears, I don't know what to say. I don't know what will happen. What are they gonna, are they gonna call me crazy for saying the name of Jesus? You don't know what to do, you're scared. I've been there, I know what it's like. You have to, you have to do one step, step one, pray in your heart. You're talking to them. You know that this is a moment that you have to speak life into them. Just pray. Holy Spirit, quietness of your heart. Holy Spirit, please help me. I don't know what to say. I'm kind of scared. Work through me. Speak through me. I want my friend to be given some life in Jesus. That's scenario, scenario number one. Just pray. Pray in your heart. Jesus, help me. That's it. Sit with them and talk to them. Tell them about your life. Tell them about Jesus. Relate to them. Speak life. Share Jesus and let the Holy Spirit move through you. And don't get in the way. Scenario number two, it's Sunday night. And you're here at Compass Church. And it's a worship night going on. Who here is at the worship night? Raise your hand. Worship night was fun. Worship night was fun. You're here on the worship nights. You're having a great time. And, man, those songs hit different. Come on. Come on. See a tear dropping from my eye? You know that song's hitting different. All right? The Holy Spirit is speaking truth into your life through the songs, through the lyrics. Maybe someone might have prayed for you. The Holy Spirit is speaking into you. Right? What do you do in that moment? What do you do? Maybe, maybe you feel this sort of affection where you're like, okay, maybe I want to do this. Or maybe this. All right? Or maybe you want to do this. And pray and worship. Just do it. Let the Holy Spirit move through you. Experience the worship. Experience the life that the Holy Spirit is speaking into you. Let the Holy Spirit move through you. Don't get in the way. Scenario number three. You're here on a Wednesday night, and you're just not having it. Life's just not, life's just not it right now. It's tough. All right, you don't, know, you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. You're not feeling God by any means. You haven't felt him in, oh, who cares, a day, two weeks, a couple months, a couple years. doesn't matter. We've all been there. All right, you're here on a Wednesday night, and you're just not feeling it. <clears throat> My encouragement is, and, and you, you, we tell you guys every week, this is a place for you to be the real you. This is a place where you can find hope. You can find safety. You can find the life that calls us to. And you feel the Holy Spirit moving in you that way. And I just encourage you to come talk to one of us. Talk to me, anyone with a lanyard. We train how to talk to you guys. That's how much we care about you guys. We all read our Bible. It's kind of a requirement. We all show up on Sundays. We know God to the best of our ability. We don't know everything, but we know enough. And we're here because we care about you guys a lot. That's the Holy Spirit moving through you because the Holy Spirit cares about you. And he has brought you to this place to have someone speak life into you and help you move on to the next week. Help you make it another day. Help you continue for the rest of the year. Come talk to us. Let the Holy Spirit move through you even when you don't feel it. You don't get in the way. Tonight's big idea. 
when we lean into the Holy Spirit and have faith, he will move through us. Don't get in the way. Said it like a million times. When you lean into the Holy Spirit, have faith, he will move through you. Don't get in the way. For those of you who do not consider yourself a Christian, and you have no clue what I was talking about, not a clue at all, maybe you've been coming here for a while, maybe this is your first night, I don't know, but you're someone who you don't, haven't put your faith in Jesus yet, and you really don't know. If anything that I said tonight, I understand that I kind of wasn't speaking to you, but if anything that I said tonight might have intrigued you, might have made you think, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, hope when I'm down and sad. If anything that I said tonight intrigued you, you're on the right path. Keep coming to Wednesday nights. Keep having fun. Keep listening to our messages. Keep hanging out with your friends. You're on the right path. And the Holy Spirit, God is calling you, drawing you towards him. Keep coming. He loves you. Well, yeah, no one has ever told you yet. God loves you. God loves you, he loves you, and he will never stop loving you. Even though you've just heard of him for the first time or you've been listening to him for a while, for a while God still loves you. Keep coming on Wednesday nights. Seek to learn more about this God who loves you. I promise you're on the right path. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the time to dive into your word, to learn more about you, what you have for us. Lord, I pray that these words were not mine. I pray that something I said tonight spoke to any of these students in this room tonight. Lord, I just pray for the rest of our night. I pray for small groups. I pray that everyone gets home safely. Hope that we can just have a good rest of our time. Thank you so much for your name. I pray. Amen.